And this morning we're going to talk about uh, being happy from the inside out. Being happy from the inside out. And um, I'm going to hit a couple of things. One, and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of mention about it. And incidentally, great prayer for the, uh, the homeless. Uh, we really need to focus on those who are homeless, hurting. Uh, they need food. They need love. Uh, the big, 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 big deal is, oh, we need to love them. Just love them and also pray for them. So those are things that we're going to be doing. But anyway, this morning, we're going to kind of focus on being happy from the inside out. It's Matthew chapter 5 and verse 8. I'm going to read it and then we're going to pray. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they will see God. It's pretty powerful, isn't it? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will, no two ways about it, see God. Heavenly Father, we just ask your blessing on this time. We thank you for the worship time. Uh, thank you, Father, personally, that my sister's with you. She's with Jim and my mom and everybody else. And so happy about that, Father, and joyful. So Holy Spirit, I ask you to come. I ask you to be our teacher, be our guide to illuminate this word today. Not, not one word will fall to the ground. Every scripture will accomplish the purpose, Father, for which you have sent it, why you have written it. And Father, may we be doers of the word and not hearers only. So Father, I ask your blessing and your anointing on this time. May Jesus Christ be exalted, magnified, and glorified. And I give you praise. I ask your blessing on this message in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see mercy. And I was thinking about this. Um, most Americans are really uh, consumed with purity, if you think about it. We want pure water, don't we? Right? Pure drinking water. We want pure air to breathe. Uh, some who are into organic foods wants to eat pure organic foods. Everything's pure, right? And nothing wrong with that. In fact, uh, last year there was a half a billion dollars sent on water purifiers. Spent on water purifiers. Half a billion. Because people want what? Pure water. So, I mean, purity is a great thing. I, I have no problem with it. And we want clean air, all that kind of stuff. But the most important thing that sometimes is overlooked is purity of heart. Purity of heart. What's going on on the inside, it's not what we take in, it's what we give out. It's not what we consume that comes into the body, but more importantly, what comes out from our heart, from out of the overflow of the heart. What happens? Our mouth speaks. It may be filled with love and joy, the fruits of the Spirit, and guess what? Be slow to speak, quick to hear. Slow to wrath. All pouring out of what? Purity of heart. And so... Um, Happiness, you might want to write this down, is a heart condition. <laughs> Happiness is a heart condition, plain and simple. And so what we're going to look at today is what does it mean to be pure in heart? So I, I think I gave a definition there, and it means unmixed motives. A pure heart has unmixed motives behind it. We're going to look at some of those today. And so as we look at a pure heart, uh, I'm going to go through three simple steps, three very easy steps of, of what it means to have a pure heart. So Roman numeral number one, remember that God sees everything. Remember that God sees everything, absolutely everything. God sees it. You can't hide anything from him. Hebrews 4.13 says, nothing in all creation is hidden from God. His God's sight, everything is uncovered and lay bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Again, I'm going to read it again. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and lay bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. In other words, nothing is secret from God. God knows everything, doesn't he? I think about this and God doesn't go, hmm, I didn't know that. He doesn't do that, does he? He didn't go back and say, well, I didn't know that about that person. No, there's no mysteries. Everything is uncovered. Everything is completely open before God Almighty. Amen? No secrets. He knows our hearts, right? 
So what we're going to look at today, Roman numeral number two, we're going to kind of get into some of the interesting things. We need to review our motives. We've got to look, look carefully at our motives in life. All right? So what, what the, those things mean. And um, our rewards for different things that we do. And so it's not what we do, it's why we do them. doesn't matter what you do, but why do you do them? What motivates you doing the things that you are currently doing? And so uh, we need just to be open and honest with God. So God gives us, in, uh, in the Gospels, Jesus gives us three interesting examples uh, that we need to actually look at our motives. And so I thought about this, and I know that we're good on all of them, but we know we can have wrong motives for a lot of different things. And number one is giving. A is giving. You can have the wrong reasons for why you give. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 2. This is Jesus speaking. He's, he's going, uh, three real simple things that you can have the wrong motives for why you do them. And it's interesting too about giving because we are a very giving church. I mean, we give tons to missions. We give to the needy. We give to the poor. We feed people. Somebody has a, a particular need. If we can do it, if we can handle it, we'll give money. I mean, we'll, we'll give it out. So giving is part of this church. I mean, it's just a part of it. And um, your giving is unbelievable. I mean, for the size of our church, the amount of money that comes in, I don't know about it. My wife does. I just say, she says, you won't believe what happened Sunday. And I go, wow, I cannot believe that because you are giving people. And in, in Matthew chapter 6, it says, so when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets. As the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by men. I tell you the truth, they have the re received their reward in full. But when you give, when you give, do not let your left hand know what the right hand is doing. Don't even let your left hand know what your right hand is doing when you give. So that your giving may be in secret. Interesting, isn't it? Your giving may be in secret. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Isn't that great? Doing things in secret, giving in secret. You know, kind of like, why do we give? Why do we do that? I think our motive has to be to bless others. It's got to be to bless others. When we give, our motive has to be we want to bless others. I don't want anybody to tithe out of obligation. In fact, I don't even know who tithes in this church. I have zero idea and I really don't care. None of us know. My wife doesn't know. We simply do not know who gives what. That's between you and God. But let me encourage you, even when you tithe, please don't do it out of habit. Please don't do it out of obligation. Give out of love. Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you this this Sunday. I got blessed with this, so Lord, I, I just want to love you, so I'm going to give this away. I'm going to give this to the church. I'm going to give this to somebody who needs it. Again, giving, you have to have the right motive, don't you? It's got to be what? Pure in our heart. Otherwise, don't give. Don't waste your time. Do it out of pure, pure love. That's why we give and to exalt and magnify God Almighty. Second one interesting enough is prayer. Now, it's, Jesus gives an interesting example, and I don't know how it really fits in. But Matthew 6, 5 says, And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father, who is unseen. And your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Okay? Now, don't misunderstand this either, because I was blessed by Larry's prayer. Right? I know Larry, and he doesn't do it to be seen by men. He does it to magnify God. So I expect when we have prayer for the nation, we got to get up here and do it, don't we? So that's not what this is talking about. 
This is kind of people that are flowery and they pray for 20 minutes and you don't even know what they say after they've said it. You know what I'm saying? You under, there are people that do that. But we even have to check our motives for why we even pray. We want to pray according to God's purposes and God's plans, don't we? Pray according to his pattern. Pray to see, for me personally, I like to see hearts and minds changed toward Jesus Christ. So we pray, we pray for what? I pray for the unborn. Pray that they may see the light of day. We pray for the parents that their hearts may be changed. We pray for loved ones that their hearts and minds may be changed. That's what prayer is all about, isn't it? It's not to be flowery or up in front or say the right prayer, or say it the right way. Um, sometimes the shortest prayers are the best. They hit right to the core. But Jesus, for some reason, is giving these as examples of where you and I can have the wrong motive for even prayer. And so we might kind of test ourselves and make sure that it's from purity of the heart. Why we're praying, why we're saying what we're saying, why we're doing what we're doing. And then the last one is fasting. I know you all like to fast and pray at least three times a week. I get all that, I understand. Uh, Fasting is an interesting thing. Um, some people do it regularly. Some people do it when the Holy Spirit tells them to do it. And I would say this, if you're doing it regularly, check why. Just check why. Versus the Holy Spirit tells you to fast for a reason. He may not even tell you what to fast from or how long to fast. But I'm going to tell you something else. You can fast for the wrong reason, the wrong motive. It has nothing to do with God Almighty at all. So we need to check these simple things that Christians should be doing. We should be giving, right? We should be praying, and we should be fasting as the Holy Spirit leads us. But it must be with what? Purity of heart. Right here why you do what you do for the right reasons. Everybody with me on that? Okay, we just have to remember that. And we want to make sure that when we fast, um, we are led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit leads us. And you'll know the right time, and you'll know the right length of time. And it might mean just giving up something, okay? That might be the, the whole thing. Give up something for a period of time and then you're fasting for maybe the salvation of a lost soul. Maybe fasting for a miracle. You want to see something supernatural happening. Lord, I just want to come before you. I'm going to fast and pray. Lord, here's what's on my heart. I hope I'm in alignment with your wishes, your heart. But here's what I'm thinking. I'm going to fast and pray over this. So these are important things. So... Jesus is making these various points, and that is, it's all done with purity of the heart. All purity of the heart. So Roman numeral number three, we may need to realign our priorities if we want to have a pure heart. Sometimes we have to realign things in our life, make changes in our life. And importantly, why we do what we do. Why we do what we do. Exodus chapter 20, and verse 3 says, And you shall have no other gods before me. Pretty plain and simple, right? No other gods before me. In other words, God says, I'm the top of your list. I am the priority for your, your whole entire life. Nothing else. Everything else comes after that. God says, I have to be number one, period. Then everything else falls into line. So it's like, um, where does God fit into your activities? Where does God fit into your daily life? Where does God fit into all these things I just talked about? You're giving, you're fasting, you're praying. Where does God fit into all of this? Is he the priority for why you do these things? And that's why Jesus is saying, blessed are the pure in heart. For they're going to do what? What are they going to do? How? How? Your heart, but how else? Think about it. You pray, you ask for miracles, you want to have a pure heart for why you even pray and ask, why you give, why you fast. 
You're going to see God. How are you going to see him? One of the ways you're going to see him is answer prayer. He'll answer it. He may not always answer it the way you want him to, but he'll answer you. You'll see him in a miracle. Isn't that good news? You will see him in the hearts and lives of the people that you are praying for because they will change and then you're going to look back and think, golly, how'd that happen? How did they change? Well, guess what? Weren't you praying for them? You're seeing God in action, aren't you? We change lives. Is that too simple? I don't think so. I expect to see God. And I'm not saying I have a, well, I, I am. I, I have a pure heart. I want to make sure Bill Hill has a pure heart all the time, 24-7, not once in a while, not just here talking to you guys, not showing up and worshiping. I go home and I'm all alone. I'm in my office. Nothing's going on. I want to have a pure heart for everything I do. Don't you? A pure heart is 24-7. There's no break. You know, even when you go to bed at night and you go to sleep, no break. Wake up with a pure heart, go to bed with a pure heart. Are you with me? Right motives, right thoughts, right actions. And another thing too is, don't spend time worrying. How many have changed anything by worry? I can worry more than you can. No. How do we change things? Worship. Worship. Replace worry with worship. Purity of heart. Purity of motive. Purity of prayer. Purity of thanksgiving. Purity of giving. All of that. And then God comes through for us. Amen? With that pure heart. question is, how does pure in heart mean? What does it actually mean? So I, I put down a couple things. A, number one. A pure in heart person is conscious of God's presence at all times. You are conscious of God's presence all the time. He's with you all the time, nonstop. Through good times, through bad times, driving down the freeway, in the middle of the COVID thing, in the middle of all these different things, he's with us all the time. I'm conscious of God constantly. And that's what this is talking about. A pure heart, God is always there. He's never absent. Number two, a pure in heart person is content with God's praise. Very important. Not other people's praise, not other people's thanksgiving. We are content with God's praise. Well done. Well done. God speaks into your ear, speaks into your heart. Well done. Good and faithful what? Servant. Well done good and faithful servant. We accept God's praise. And sometimes it'll come through other people too. It'll come through other things. But we must be content with God's praise. He's the one that rewards us. Number three, a pure and hard person is controlled by God's priorities. We're controlled by God's priorities, not our own. And I want to do what God wants us to do and nothing more. Amen? I want his priorities to be in my life. List them down, whatever they, those things might be, whatever they might be. So what's the, the result of a pure heart? What is the result? Happiness. Happy. Happy is a result. And number two, we will see God move. We will see God in action. We will see changes as we pray and we love and we care for people. Um, again, how many of you pray for people you don't know? Right? You're, you know, just you pray for them. Um, you probably are praying for the salvation of people that don't even know you're praying for their salvation, plus their kids' salvation, plus their husband and wife's salvation. They have not a clue. They don't have a clue. 
But you and I get to watch and sit back and watch God move in their lives, don't we? We get to see God in action through our prayers. That's pretty powerful stuff. So as we, thank you, amen, I'm with you. So as we have that pure heart, these are some of the things that we see. Psalm 63, 2. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and glory. I've seen you in the sanctuary and I have beheld your power and your glory. We see God's love, his acceptance, his forgiving, his healing, his miracles. Isn't that great? We get to see all of this happen. Number one, I'm glad that I'm loved. I'm glad that God accepted Bill Hill just like he is. With all the weirdisms, as people say to me, man, you're weird. I said, I know I am, but that's okay. That's how God made me, all right? <laughs> so live with it, all right? But we see, and then he forgives us. Now, I believe that God forgives us even of the small or insignificant things that we may or may not do. Not only the big stuff, but even the little things. Lord, forgive me for being so dumb. I should not have said that. I should not have done that. It's not like this is giant, you're going to hell kind of a sin. Sometimes the Holy Spirit convicts us and says, you shouldn't have done that. All right, well, Lord, forgive me. And then do what? Move on. Don't stay there. Move on. We see God. His love, acceptance, His forgiveness, His saving power. And A, we see God in answered prayer. We all know that. We all know that. You'll see God, every time a prayer is answered, that's because God has done it. God has answered it. You pray it, He answers it. You thank Him, right? And another one is, we see God in changed lives. Romans 6, 4. Changed lives. Terry and I have seen a yeah, changed lives and... In, in, People close to us, family. I mean, dramatic changed lives. Why? Intercessory prayer. I'm talking about dramatic stuff. How, you're like, yeah, yeah. How many of you have seen that in a, some of you have been praying for in your family, friends? Dramatic change take place. I mean, dramatic change. Yep. We've seen it. Psalms 19.1, the heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. We see God in creation. We see God in creation, his design. Look outside, it's raining. Sometimes there's mildew out there and there's grass, all that stuff. But we see God in every single solitary piece of creation, don't we? He created it all. I mean, I think today is the day that the Lord hath made, and so let's do what? Let's rejoice and be glad in it. How many would rather have it be 74 and sunny? Yes, yes, it ain't. So, what's the word of God say? Rejoice and be glad in it. And thank God for this day. John 13, 34, a new commandment I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. So D, we see God as we love one another. We see God in action as we love one another, care for one another, and bless one another. Psalms 23, 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Isn't that interesting? Walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Walking through the valleys. We will go through the valleys. You'll go through the mountaintops. That's part of life. Valleys, ups and downs. Through it all, God says, I'm with you. I'm with you. Take comfort. I am with you. And that leads me to the last point. E, we see God in the midst of circumstances, in our tests and in our trials. We'll see God through all of that. We'll just open up our spiritual eyes, take a look. In every circumstance of life, every circumstance of life, we can see God. Every one of it. It doesn't matter what it is. If you're willing to open up your eyes, 
and see him at work. Open up your eyes and see him at work. It says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. They will see signs, wonders, and miracles following. And all we have to do, pretty simple, purity of heart. And what does that mean? Right motives for everything we do. Are you with me? Yes. Father God, thank you. Thank you for your word, the clarity of your word, being pure in spirit, pure, purity of heart. Father, you wouldn't ask us to do it if it wasn't possible. So we just thank you and we praise you and we worship you and we thank you that you give us the power to also walk before you in spirit and in truth. Father, thank you for the miracles that have already happened. And thank you for the miracles that are going to happen in the hearts and lives of people. We give you all thanks, we give you all praise, and we give you all glory. As I ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Amen.